are you doing, Scott? Just about to do some filming with the old 700 Nitro. 700 Nitro Express, huh? Put that down. What's the big deal? You think they're gonna blow up if I drop them? Yeah, that's exactly what I think. <sighs> that's just an old wives' tale. Just put them down. Does that make you nervous? Scooter! Ooh. Stop it! Ooh. Quit! Ooh. <laughs> What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're back on the range and today we're going to be conducting some science with 700 Nitro and some other large safari calibers. Let's go get set up and get started. First table throw of 2023. So here recently I saw a video of someone firing a 9mm handgun at an indoor shooting range. When they're shooting, one of their spent shell casings ejects from the gun, bounces off the wall, and then lands in their open ammo box and detonates around. After I watched that video, the first thing that popped into my head was what would that look like if it was a much larger caliber? So today we're gonna find out what it would look like if a large safari cartridge such as the 700 Nitro went off outside of a firearm. So before we break out the big boys, we're gonna start out with some smaller calibers so we have something to compare them to. We're gonna start out with an Underwood ammo, nine millimeter, 124 grain full metal jacket. So I'm just gonna place this here in my handy dandy bullet reactor, get behind my truck and pull a string. Alrighty, let's see if this thing works. Here we go. So it looks like the nine millimeter successfully fired. I reviewed the slow-mo footage and it appears the brass casing breaks up into a bunch of little pieces. And if you were near that, it would potentially cause an injury. So now that we know we have the potential for shrapnel, I'm gonna go ahead and place this Ballistic Dummy Lab zombie head next to our bullet reactor. The next round I'm gonna be using is an Underwood Ammo 308, 175 grain controlled chaos. Okie dokie. Here we go, 308. Ooh, that was slightly louder than the nine mil. <laughs> so it looks like the 308 successfully fired and if you were standing next to that thing, I would say you definitely would wanna be wearing safety glasses. That makes my neck itch. I think that's enough of the small stuff. Let's go ahead and step it up to the 700 Nitro Express. Here it is compared to the 308 that we just used. This is a 175 grain bullet. This is a 1000 grain 70 caliber bullet. I would say you definitely want some safety glasses when this thing goes off, but this one may require a helmet. I am gonna go ahead though and put some safety glasses on this guy. Alrighty, 700 Nitro Express. I am really curious to see what happens. If you are not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, you need to hit that subscribe button. Do it. Do it. <laughs> that did not sound promising. So that was not as eventful as I thought it would be. Okay, so all the powder came out of it, but I do not think all the powder burns. We have quite a bulge at the very top of the casing. And after looking at the slow-mo footage, it appears the round just shot straight up in the air. So it appears that Mr. Zombie here was fairly safe. The round shot straight up in the air and no shrapnel was created. <laughs> so now that we know that, I may reposition the round to where it's pointed at the zombie head. But before I do that, let's see what happens when we use 600 Nitro Express. That is a 900 grain full metal jacket. Okay, let's see what kind of reaction we get out of 600 Nitro Express. That was a lot louder. So it appears that the 600 Nitro Express had a slightly faster burning powder. That was a spicy meatball. Mr. Zombie here definitely was thankful for his safety glasses. 
and it appears we did quite a bit of damage to our table. Actually, if you look right here, he has some unburnt gunpowder stuck to the side of his face. So as of right now, I'm gonna say that you have more potential for injury with 600 Nitro Express rather than 700 Nitro Express. But what about a 577 Tyrannosaur with a 750 grain bullet? I suspect we're gonna have a similar result to the 600 Nitro Express. All right, 577 Tyrannosaur. Here we go. Whoop. I was correct. The 577 Tyrannosaur was just as energetic as the 600 Nitro Express. It does seem that Mr. Zombie would not be having a good day. I don't really see any marks on his face, but it did appear to create quite a bit of shrapnel. So now I think it's time we switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna try to get these rounds as close as I possibly can to Mr. Zombie here. And you know what? I'm taking off his safety glasses. So now I have a slightly different setup. I'm gonna place the zombie head right here, and then I'm gonna have a 700 nitro round pointing directly at it. The previous test showed that the round shot straight up in the air, so I think we may have some pretty cool results. I think this is gonna be good. Maybe not. <laughs> so it appears to me that 700 Nitro firing outside of the gun doesn't seem to be too lethal. Here's the bullet right here on the table. <laughs> Such a big round. There is a ton of unburnt gunpowder all over the table as well. And then Mr. Zombie here, he got hit right here just above the ear and he has, well, his skull is cracked. So I retract my statement. It is potentially lethal, just not as lethal as you would think. So next, I wanna try this test one more time, but this time we're gonna use a 600 Nitro Express. This round seems to be slightly more energetic than the 700 Nitro. And since I know this round is gonna create some shrapnel, I'm really curious to see what happens if I place these Doritos on top of it. I think we're gonna have a better reaction out of this one. Here. <laughs> so again, it appears the 600 Nitro Express had a slightly faster burning powder. Our Doritos bag got shredded. <laughs> Now, Mr. Zombie here, let, oh, <laughs> the bullet is stuck in the side of his head. <laughs> so I'm gonna say that a 600 Nitro Express that goes off outside of the gun definitely has some potential to cause an injury. Look at all this unburnt gunpowder. Let's see if we can pull that out of there. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, that would definitely hurt. So there's one last thing that I wanna to do today. I have this one gallon container of tartar sauce. I'm gonna poke a hole in the tartar sauce, slip the 600 nitro round inside it, and then see what happens. <laughs> oh, here we go. Round two. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okie dokie. Well, I am gonna call that a success. There is tartar sauce everywhere. <laughs> Let me see the tartar sauce container here. Oh, not for safety glasses. It does not look like the round is inside that. So according to the trail of tartar sauce, 
I think I should go that way. All over the ground here. I'm wondering if we're going to find our piece of brass. I don't think I'm going to find the bullet. <laughs> Check that out. Covered in tartar sauce and pretty shredded. So after today's testing, I have determined that a safari round that goes off outside of a gun definitely creates substantial risk for an injury. That's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a big favor and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistics Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you want to pick up a shirt. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. See you next time. <laughs>